sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam and mabad ahabitabillah a questioner asked and it's a question from Finland and may Allah preserve us and preserve the brother bless us and bless him bless us with ilm and nafiras and tayyib wa ilm and mutaqabbilan ameen ya rabbil alameen and as I said ilm and nafiya may Allah bless us with beneficial knowledge wa iyadu billah min ilm la yanfa ومن قلب لا يخشع ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن دعوة لا يستجاب لها and may Allah protect us from knowledge that has no benefit and hearts that don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and an dissatisfied or unsatisfied soul or self and from supplication which is not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the questioner asked two questions we're going to be as brief as possible first I want to say that really this question you should pose this to the ulama but I'm just going to give you in regards to what we already discussed in our Nawak al Islam I'm actually not even going to get deep but I, uh, deep in this issue but I just want to say uh, the first question being about uh, a person prostrating uh, and that the ummah, the ummum or the nations before us, that prostrating was not considered uh, an act of ibadah as, as we have been from the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But however, since we have a nas from the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, and he strongly rebuked uh, I believe it was uh, Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala whoever came from Sham or it was, uh, it was Mu'adh or it was Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala and that he came from Sham and then he said he saw the people there prostrating to their uh, you know their people of uh, high status so he thought who better than to prostrate and show this respect to the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so his qast, his niyyah was just to show respect. The Prophet Sallallahu made an inkar of that. He uh, said that this is improper uh, and this is, you know, uh, you know, that this is impermissible. So let us know that this is impermissible in Islam. So that alone right there, even though we know the details that most of the people, Mu'ad didn't mean it as ibadah. Or I mean the Sahabi, radiallahu and he didn't mean it as ibadah. But the Prophet Sallallahu still made an inkar. So even if we know, for example, in many Asian countries, J Japan and, and many places, they bow out of respect for one another. Martial artists in many uh, traditions, they bow. Uh, they don't mean worship by most of them. However, Islamically, to safeguard yourself, you avoid it. Halas. Whether to say that in and of itself it's shirk, no, we can't necessarily say that that's shirk. I, I don't understand the relation with shirk. Or that it's kufr al-akbar, kufr al-akbar in the sense that that this is uh, considered an act of ibadah. So the best thing, bottom line, is avoid it, avoid it. This is the shahid, avoid it. The second question uh, had to do with the ruler that does not judge by what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala revealed. Uh, if he doesn't fall in the categories, which makes it kufr al-akbar. But then I got a new teacher in Akita who had a lot of arguments with my teacher about the subject who told me most of the scholars hold the position on Tahkim al qawanin that it is Kufr al-Akbar. Ibn Baz and Al-Bani are some of the few who say otherwise. If I read their books, listen to their Q&As, what they mean, Hosan, uh, Abdulaziz Ali Sheikh, uh, Muhammad ibn Ibrahim, Sheikh al-Raji, Ibn Jibreen, then I find this position but my new teacher is very likely to be true. They all say that Tahkim al qawanin is Kufr al-Akbar. But judging other than what Allah revealed is Asghar. So, uh, and then he had other tafsil with the question. Can you provide an answer concerning what the people of knowledge specifically say about altering and changing the laws and constitutions? Uh, for one, we kind of dealt with this in, a, in our lesson. We did deal with this. I don't know how thorough, maybe it wasn't thorough enough, and may Allah uh, forgive us of our shortcomings. But 
the saying Tahkim al-Qawaneen is Kufr al-Akbar, but judging other than what Allah revealed as Askar, I don't understand the difference in that. The difference in that, uh, because the tafsir of the ayat as uh, Ahla uh, Hadith, like Imam al-Albani and other than him, have shown that the tafsir, the, the statement of Ibn Abbas that is Kufr doing al Kufr, that lets us know that the general hukum of doing this is a major sin, but it doesn't take one out of the fold of Islam, except with other details and conditions. The second point I want to mention is that it's very important for you to go into those things. If you don't have the ability, what I would say is do not engage yourself in depth about those issues. Because as you said, you're coming from the Netherlands, okay? Right now, you guys have a, pri a, pri a big pro problem with uh, the Tekfiris. I know they're very big in Finland, in the Netherlands, in uh, Sweden, Gothenburg, and so forth. You have a lot of these ISIS and Al-Qaeda guys, and a lot of them, I'm sure, are teaching, and teaching their deviance and misguidance. This is why you had so many people from those lands who went to be fighters in those places with those people. And so, what I would say is you have many bigger issues than worrying about making general takfir and do not listen to your teacher at all. Leave him as a teacher if he is concluding from this and making a ruling about all the leaders. Even if it's with the exception of only one or two. Avoid him. Get away from his lessons. It's no benefit. There's plenty of Salafis from Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah that are teaching out there, these same books where you can get the uh, beneficial details. So I say avoid him because he is misguiding you because those are not t details of Bin Uthimin and Sheikh Ali Sheikh, uh, or, uh, uh, the, the Mufti and so forth. You need to go and look at their views. And another point that you mentioned, and I hate that we're not really engaged in this issue, but these are major Messiah and these Messiah take Durus, and I have zero time to even do bath. I was going to look into some, I, I don't have time, I'm sorry. I have a PhD I'm doing, I have other things to do, I just don't have time. Go back to what I said in Nawak of Islam, and that's, I stand on that, okay? So what I will say is, is that, uh, and then you mentioned something about indicating that they're talking about single judgments. How do you know they're talking about single judgments? How are you distinguishing about, and, uh, about the one making a single judgment and the one who does it regularly? And how and who, or what I will say is that these are issues of ijtihad when it comes to making a hukum and saying that there even is a difference between doing it all the time and doing it once or twice. Where does this tafsil come from the book of Allah? Where does this details come from, from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to make those distinguishments? Or even the faham or the understanding, the general understanding of the salaf as so that's what I'm saying. These are detailed issues. These are intricate issues. These are issues we should not really be involving ourselves in depth in. These are really for, I would say, you know, as far as getting into the these specific details. And then you want to make a hukum. As I mentioned throughout the treaties, that this, I'm not giving you this so that you can make tikfir of people. That I am teaching and trying to give the tarbiyah that the people will learn about what to stay away from because that's really ultimately the point the point of that treaties is not to make tikfir of people but it's what to stay away from it's about staying away from those major sins those major uh, issues that take you out of the fold of Islam that's what the Imam said Imam Muhammad ibn Wahhab Rahimahullah Ta'ala he said he said that in his treaties that it's, it's, it's for the, these are some of the most dangerous uh, uh, Nawaqid al-Islam that he witnessed in his time that were happening and that they uh, that it was very common amongst the people so in order to stay away from it as he mentioned in the treaties so the point is not so that you can make a hukum on the, the leader of such and such country and this president of this country and the prime, prime minister of that country and the king of that country no, that's not the, the point of studying those very uh, important treatises, but rather it's for you to stay away from that. So I will just say that if you need more details, then you should go 
ask uh, one of the, uh, the ulama about this issue and if you have the ability and ask your teacher because if they're doing all this talk about what these mashayikh are saying see if they can get one of those mashayikh on the phone because Imam Fozan is alive uh, the Mufti is alive uh, and, and you can you can find out from those two about these details Sheikh Abdelaziz Araji is alive and their explanations are translated in English so you can find out about some of those those issues but then you can even get more details put him on front street and have him call because otherwise he could be misguiding you and so my advice is to continue to atlab al ilm and be cautious of people coming with details and their rye and their opinions because even those details again these are ijtihadat these are ijtihadat if someone says well if you do it if you do this sin and you continue to rule that it is like this they have still have to say there has to be a dilla from the sharia to support them then making takfir of the individual who does that because you don't say the one who continually uses riba or is continually drinking wine or is continually doing zina that they're making it lawful but as Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah or also it may be a statement of Ibn al-Qayyim I need to check they said that istihlal fi qalb that it's an issue of the heart that making it lawful is an issue of the heart and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct is from Allah Azza wa Jalla anything I said that was incorrect is from myself with the shaitan uh, and addressing the last part he mentioned he wishes the lessons were longer again I don't have the time so that I tried to it took me a lot of energy a lot of time even to kind of prepare for those lessons and recording them having them edited by someone else you know that costs money and it costs time so I I don't have time and may Allah bless us with tawfiq and I hope that there was some benefit that you derived from it and my advice, as I mentioned in the last lesson, is also to listen to other people's explanations as long as they are Salafi. As long as they are people who adhere to the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and understand the Salaf. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Nabina Muhammad wa ala Alaihi Wasallam.